In this short video, we're going to talk about convolutions. So if you have two functions, which are, a, you can find a Laplace transform of both functions. So they're piecewise continuous on the non-negative real line. Uh, and uh, we probably need them to, have, to be uh, of exponential order, we can define a new function, which is called the convolution of f and g. And it's written f asterisk or f star g equals the integral from 0 to t of f of tau times g of t minus tau dt. So we're creating a new function from f and g. It's a function of t. Inside the integration, we just have tau as a dummy variable. We also say f convolved with g instead of the convolution of f and g. And we just have to be aware that we're using a star uh, which looks like multiplication, and we're going to see it's connected in a certain way to a type of multiplication. Uh, but here it means convolution, and um, we should say the convolution of f and g. There's no uh, f times g or f star g. We say the convolution of f and g or f convolved with g. So let's practice just using this definition. Uh, we're going to first find the convolution of e to the t uh, convolved with sine of t. So let's put it into the definition there. So I have the integral from 0 to t of e to the tau sine of t minus tau d tau. And to evaluate this integral, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate by parts or integrate by parts. Uh, when I'm done with that, it looks like I'll need a second integration by parts. And then I'll get the case where I have um, the convolution of e to the t and sine of t on the right-hand side. And it also appears on the left-hand side. This is my integral that's being subtracted off here e to the tau sine of t to the tau dt. So I'll just add the convolution of e to the t and sine of t to both sides, and then solve for the convolution, giving me uh, 1 half in brackets minus sine of t plus e to the t minus cosine of t. All right, well, let's look at the Laplace transform of that function that I just discovered. So I can bring the 1 half out in front. And now let's just find Laplace transform of sine of t. That's 1 over s squared minus 1. So I have a minus sign with that. Laplace transform of e to the t is just 1 over s minus 1, and the Laplace transform of minus cosine of t, that's the minus s then over s squared of 1. Well, let's do a little algebra with this. I can certainly collect the uh, terms that have a denominator of s squared plus 1. Uh, we've got a lot of minus signs, so let me factor the minus sign out in front of the brackets. And then let's write that with a single denominator. Collect the like terms. And then notice that after I collect the right terms, I can write this as a product. 1 over s squared plus 1 over 1, I mean, sorry, times 1 over s minus 1. Well, guess what? 1 over s squared plus 1, that is the Laplace transform of sine of t. 1 over s minus 1 is the Laplace transform of e to the t. And so what we can say is that the 
Laplace transform of a convolution is the product of the Laplace transforms. So this is where it reminds us of multiplication. The multiplication, though, does not occur in the T space. It occurs in the Laplace transform, or the S space. So our convolution theorem just says that, that if we have uh, nice functions that are piecewise continuous, they're of exponential order, then uh, we can uh, say that the Laplace transform of the convolution of those two functions is this just the product of their Laplace transforms. Now, I have uh, not mentioned this yet, but it is, it's an important property that's really not emphasized enough in the book. But we can see based on this that at the Laplace transform, say, of G star F would just be the Laplace transform of G times the Laplace transform of F. And if we look at the definition of convolution, uh, we can see that convolution has this very nice property that in the sense that it commutes. The order of convolution does not matter. So if I take f and convolve it with g, or g and convolve it with f, I'll get the same result. So let's do an example. Uh, let's go ahead and evaluate the plus transform of this integral. Well, we can recognize this integral as being the convolution of e to the t and sine of t. And we actually just worked this out before. The Laplace transform of e to the t would be 1 over 1 minus s, and the Laplace transform of sine of t would be 1 over s squared plus s. And we could also have the inverse form if we recognize a function of s as being the product of two uh, La Laplace transforms, uh, then we could evaluate its inverse Laplace transform uh, as being the convolution of f and g. So in our example here, we'd like to find the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus k squared squared. And we should recognize that as being the Laplace transform of sine of kt times the Laplace transform of sine of kt. All right, so that's exactly what we'll do here. We'll break that up as 1 over s squared plus k squared times itself. Uh, now, to get the uh, right value for the uh, sine of kt, I don't, I don't need 1. I need to have a k on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply times k, and then multiply times k again. And then I'll have to divide by k squared. And so then I can apply the, uh, uh, the theorem. And that will give me sine of kt convolved with sine of kt. So this is not multiplication. Remember, this is convolution. So we're going to have to actually work that out using an integral. So let's go ahead and use the definition of convolution. And then what we're going to do in order to evaluate this integral is we're going to make use of a trig identity. This just comes from the uh, angle sum and angle difference formulas for cosine. And so we're going to make that substitution. And now we can anti-differentiate each one of these terms. And so uh, I'll need to evaluate that between 0 and t. And that gives me my final formula. So what that says is that the, uh, let me go back. 
that the inverse Laplace transform of one over quantity s squared plus k squared squared is this formula right here, sine of kt minus kt times cosine of kt all over 2 k cubed. Well, what if I'm trying to uh, find the Laplace transform of an integral defined function? It goes from 0 to t. This is some function uh, dependent on a dummy variable tau, and I'm integrating against tau. Well, we could recognize this as really just being 1 times f of t. And so this would be a uh, convolution of the function f with the function constant function g of tau equals 1. And of course, if I reverse a constant function and then add the t in there, it's still going to equal 1. So that's can be viewed then, this original integral can be viewed as the convolution of f of t with the function g of t equals 1. And then we can apply our formula, which says that I would take the Laplace transform of f of t and then multiply it times the Laplace transform of 1. So I would get capital F of s times 1 over s, or just write it as capital F of s over s. And then, of course, there's an inverse form. If you recognize that you're trying to take the uh, inverse Laplace transform of a function divided by s, then you could just apply that and say, I just need to integrate from uh, 0 to t of the inverse Laplace transform of uppercase f of tau d tau. 